Greetings and thank you again for joining us today as we uh, go through our daily devotion. Our devotional comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Since it's just a couple of verses, I'm going to go ahead and read it for us. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same spirit and the same judgment. For it's been reported to me by Chloe's people that there's quarreling among you, my brothers. Well, first thing we see is an uh-oh here. Chloe's people have reported to Paul, the, and now Paul's appealing to them in the name of the Lord Jesus, a very strong statement there, to be united in the same mind and same judgment. Uh, why? Because there was divisions among them. So what were the quarrels uh, that were leading to divisions well, this young church had all kinds of issues going on. They had members who kept living a sinful lifestyle, abusing the grace of God. And in addition to that, verse 12 will say uh, one group had basically sided with Paul and the other Apollos, and Paul corrects them on that. But instead of looking at his correction, I want to actually back up a little bit because, yes, Paul is giving a correction to the church, but not before he gives a very gracious introduction. Uh, if we were just to read Paul's correction apart from his introduction, I think we'd miss Paul's deep affectionate tone for this church. He seems to have covered the multitude of their sins with the love he had for them. So instead of just giving up on this church that had all kinds of problems, he gets involved and he shows grace in order that he might later uh, deliver truth to help bring unity to a church who had divisions. And he knew that the growth is caused by God and he was just simply to be faithful to what God had entrusted him with. So let's take a quick look at Paul's introduction, just kind of scanning for some words here. First of all, he's calling them brothers. Uh, they're sanctified in Jesus, called to be saints. Um, he's granting them grace and peace, and he gives thanks to God for them. And uh, he says they're enriched in him in all speech and knowledge. And uh, he goes, says that they're not lacking any gift. And uh, he'll, God will sustain them to the end, guiltless on the day of the Lord. He reminds them of God's faithfulness by which they were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. So very, very gracious, warm, and affectionate tone. Uh, much easier to handle a correction when it comes on the heels of, of someone showing you grace. Um, it's obvious, I think, when a person just wants to force their own opinion onto you rather than, um, you know, giving you grace and saying, hey, the reason I'm coming to you is because I care about you and want to see you honor the Lord with the way you live. So it actually, the, the coming to somebody apart from grace, just giving them the truth actually reminds me a lot of Job's three friends, right? And, and how, did, how did that whole situation pair out? Well, they all basically tried to cast their own opinions onto Job's situation, and they had a short-sightedness because They'd never experienced what Job had been going through. So uh, not a good idea to do that. Let's show grace in order to give truth. But what if someone told you that they had a correction for you, but actually took some time to explain the reason for them coming to you is because they care about you and they love you and uh, they show you grace. They give you then the truth. And, and Paul's appeal here wasn't for self-gain. He wanted to see the church unified so that God might be glorified in it. He appealed to them on the basis of his love for them that they be on the same mind. Well, why is that important? Well, have you ever been in a quarrel with somebody? Uh, being in a quarrel is basically what happens when you're not of the same mind with somebody. Uh, tension creates conflict. So it's, it's my mind telling me the very opposite thing that your mind is telling you, and now it's my job to force my opinion on you. That's where the, the conflict begins. And and of course, after all, I'm right and you're wrong. So there creates this division uh, between two brothers. So he really wanted them to be of the same mind, which is an interesting statement. What does it really mean? Well, that, in other words, that they'd be able to look at the things they were quarreling about and come to a place where they repent because they see the situation now from a godly perspective. Uh, that will always create unity because pleasing God becomes the motive, not merely just forcing my opinion on someone else just for the sake of getting them to believe what I believe. So 
I think what we can learn from this is really the next time we have a correction for another brother or sister, always remember to show grace before delivering the truth. It'll go a long way to help the person receive that correction if they know it's coming from a place of love. And, uh, you know, for the times we haven't shown grace, maybe the Lord's bringing something to mind where we need to go and be reconciled to another brother or sister. Maybe we are a little harsh with someone or, or short with somebody. Uh, let's try and think of some of those areas and, uh, first of all, apply this topic to the rest of our encounters with people, but also to go backwards and see if there's anybody maybe we've wronged and, and treated a little more harsh rather than showing love first. I hope you find that encouraging. God bless you guys, and thank you again for joining us today.